Do you know your medicine? Weed Maps and SC Laboratories bring you an educational series on the science of clean and safe cannabis. Today's cannabinoid profile is on Delta 9 Tetrahydrocannabinol. Hi, I'm Dr. Bonnie Goldstein, and I've been educating patients about cannabis for a number of years. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol. It's the most prominent compound found in the cannabis plant. It was discovered in 1964 by researchers in Israel. Cannabis has been used for many, many years, thousands of years, but nobody knew exactly uh, what was in it. In fact, that same group continues to do research on cannabis to this day. THC starts out in the plant as geronial phosphate and olive acid. Through an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, the geronial phosphate and the olive acid are catalyzed to cannabigibarellic acid, or CBGA. The CBGA is the precursor to several of the cannabinoids. To make THC, we go through the pathway catalyzed by another enzyme called THC synthase. It allows the CBGA to become THCA, or tetrahydrocannabinol carboxylic acid. The THCA has very different effects than the THC. Now with heat or over time, the THCA can decarboxylate into THC. This carboxylic acid renders this compound virtually non-psychoactive. And what's interesting about THC, or Delta 9 THC, is that it has so many different effects on humans. And in about the 1990s or so, uh, it was found that humans have cannabinoid receptors, and there have been two identified, CB1 and CB2. And THC binds to these receptors, causing a change in the function of the cell where it's binding. So what are some of the effects or changes that we see with THC? THC is well known to turn off nausea. It turns off the vomiting. It also appears to trigger appetite. It also appears to have effects as anti-inflammatory. In fact, it's been found to be 20 times stronger than aspirin. And it's also been found to be two times stronger than hydrocortisone, a well-known steroid that people use. It's been found to be a strong antioxidant. There was a study out of Harvard that talked about these mice that had these large tumor loads and by giving them THC, the tumor, and I believe they were lung cancer cells, were reduced in half. There's also uh, was a study in humans where THC actually reduced or decreased the tumor cells for this specific type of brain cancer. THC has been found to be helpful for patients with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And there are a number of current studies going on right now looking specifically at using THC to treat PTSD. THC has also been found to help patients with Tourette syndrome. And Tourette's is very difficult to treat overall because the medications that can help often have very significant side effects, especially in young people. And so THC was studied and they found that the patients had overall uh, less ticks and less urges. SC Labs tests for THC using an HPLC, also known as a high performance liquid chromatograph. There's basically two methods out there to test for THC in cannabis. Some people use an HPLC, other people use a GC. The problem with the GC or gas chromatograph is that at the process actually heats the cannabis up and measures it based on the boiling point of the different constituents in, in the resin. Picture trying to weigh a piece of paper by setting it on fire and placing it on a scale. The problem with that is, is you're going to lose some of your sensitivity because the, the paper is changing as you're actually trying to measure it. So that's why we choose to use HPLC to, to test for THC and all the other cannabinoids. No one has ever overdosed on THC and the reason being is that you do not have these receptors, the CB1 and CB2 receptors, located anywhere in the brainstem. The brainstem controls breathing and heart rate. If the THC doesn't bind in that area, it cannot change or turn off, similar to things like opioids. And so we do not see that with THC. Usually a, um, quote, overdose of THC causes a patient to have excessive anxiety. They have a sense of what's called perceived harm. They think something bad's gonna happen to them. They're really in no medical danger.